Welcome to the world of 3D printing, where your ideas become reality. Did you just get a new 3D printer? Yeah, I got one too. But in order to get it printing, we need to dive into that very essential part of 3D printing, the filament. Now, I remember what it was like when I got my first 3D printer. I went online and I was ready to buy some filament and I got confused really quickly because there are a lot, it was like alphabet soup. There are all sorts of different types of filaments with letters and I didn't know what to buy were some better than others or were some that I, my printer couldn't print. And what happened if I picked the wrong one? Would I hurt my printer? But don't worry, we've got you covered. At the end of this video, you'll be able to go out and buy filament that will be fun or functional and meet what you're looking for, for you to print with your new printer, all the great things. Before we talk about the different types of filament, let's look at what filament's actually made of. So these are tiny plastic pellets and they're called resin beads and they are melted down along with things like colorant and then extrude it out into a long strand that's wound onto these spools so that we can buy them. Now, different polymers have different features, like some might be impact resistant or flexible or super strong or easy to print. And these days there are just so many options when it comes to filament, which is great for us. Let's talk about the most common filaments used in the 3D printing consumer marketplace. All right, PLA or polylactic acid is by far and away the most common filament. And everything you see here on the table was printed in PLA. And the majority of what I have in my collection of filament is PLA. Now it's PLA, but my mother-in-law calls it PLOF, which I kind of like is the go-to not only for people just starting, but also for people who are running a print farm and making their business on 3D printing. A lot of people are using just PLA. There are no weird smells. It comes in so many varieties. And fun fact, it's fermented. Now the downside is it isn't the strongest and it has a temperature threshold. So for instance, if you were to leave it in your car on a really hot summer day, you will have some slumping. Maybe not this bad, but it is still great for a lot of options and for a lot of what people are printing. Next is PETG or PETG, depending on who you're talking to. And it stands for polyethylene terephthalate glycol. Now you're familiar with PET, I bet, because of water bottles, soda bottles, and other containers like this. It's really flexible and very strong. And that is what PETG is. There's a glycol modifier added here so that it can be remelted as it's melted once to make the filament and you're gonna melt it again to make your model. So you can think of it as PLA's cool, stronger cousin, if you will. It's more flexible and impact resistant than PLA. It does handle heat better. You can leave it in your car in the summer. Um, it may have a shinier finish like this one, depending on what uh, added has been added in for colorants because it has a more clear base. So you can use it for functional parts, outdoor prints, things that need to take a little beating. And it is not much harder to print with than PLA. And I know a lot of people who love printing with it and it's becoming more popular. So I'm seeing more and more PETG options available. Next is ABS and ASA. ABS is acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. And this was the OG 3D printing filament. So when 3D printing consumers first started, that was the filament that everybody was using. That was the one that was available. And so that's what, hey, we thought we should use. And it is tough to print with because it needs a higher temperature to print at. But then as it cools down, it shrinks. And so you're going to have a lot of issues if you don't have an enclosure that you can keep at a higher temperature. And so it is not something I would recommend as a beginning filament. It is a more advanced filament. And so for instance, I have ABS parts that I printed for my Voron printers, and it definitely is a good polymer. If you have ever played with Lego, you know what ABS is, and there is a lot out there. Now, ASA is an alternative. It's actually better for outdoor use because it has UV resistance and it's a little bit easier to print with. So if you have some small stuff to print, I'd say try that. But ABS is great for mechanical part. Anything that needs to be super strong and weatherproof. Next is TPU or thermoplastic polyurethane. And this is flexible filament. So if you need something that's squishy or flexy, look at TPU or TPE. And it can be mildly too super flexible. There is something called a shore hardness. 
and the higher the number on shore hardness A or D, the less flexible it's going to be, which means the easier it's going to be to print. So Bamboo Lab has TPU for their AMS and it is a TPU, but it is not that flexible and it prints really easily. Whereas there are some filaments that are super flexible and they are more challenging to print. But either way, if you have something you want to print that's flexible, it's definitely a lot of fun. Like who doesn't need a flexi skeleton, flexi skull? I had to print too, obviously. In any case, try it out. Do a little bit of printing first and then definitely grab some TPU because it's a lot of fun. Now that we've talked about the main types of 3D printer filament, which one would I recommend getting started with if you've just gotten your first 3D printer? And without a doubt, that's going to be PLA. And it's just a great filament because it's very easy to use. It doesn't have odors. And 3D printing is not like 2D printing. There are way too many variables and there can be a lot of frustration and failed models while you're learning how 3D printing works in the first place. So I say go with PLA to get started. And then if you want something stronger, PETG is the next step. It also has that flexibility. And some people start with PETG and love it. If you need flexibility, you're going to need to go with TPU. So try something with a higher shore hardness to make sure your 3D printer can handle it. And then if you need to go ABS or ASA, make sure your 3D printer is capable of it. And I still recommend getting some experience 3D printing to start before you jump into the harder filaments. But we still have more to talk about because within PLA, there are just so many options. Okay, I cannot leave you by saying go print with PLA because you will have probably already heard that from a bunch of people. So let's talk about the varieties or the subcategories of PLA. And what I want to do is I want to put them in two columns. One is the go for it, print with it, now have fun. And the other one that's the wait for it later until you've had some time to get accustomed to 3D printing. And that's because most of the PLAs out there are going to print easily and well on your printer. But there are a couple of types that are going to be more challenging. And I want you to have a nice experience getting started 3D printing and not get angry and throw it out the window. So let's talk about the go for it filaments. First of all, anything that's just a solid PLA color. Next, silks. This is a solid silk. I love silks. I was so excited when I ordered my first silk. And on the opposite side of silk is matte filament. These are great as well. There are translucent filaments. It used to be you had to get a pet G to get a translucent. They've got a really nice translucence in PLA now. And what about glitter? Now, a lot of people will say, whoa, is that glitter metal? And do I have to be concerned about running that through my 3D printer? Think of glitter as sort of like a mylar balloon, that type of plastic cut up really tiny because it's super shimmery. And so glitter of all flavors and sizes. And then there's even smaller than glitter and you have a pearlescent sheen. Also a really nice thing to print with. More filament coming. Next, rainbows. So many rainbows out there. I love rainbows. This is a base rainbow that is not in silk. What you're going to find more often than not is the rainbows are going to be silk based rainbows uh, and they are gorgeous printed. This is what I would call a gradient. So notice how it is very gradually moving from one color to the next. Again, it's basically a rainbow, but it's a type of rainbow and also beautiful. Outside of rainbow, what about going with a granite or other rock sort of appearance? So it has some flex in it that make it look like rocks. Really nice. If you're looking for extra strong, there are tough PLAs, various words meaning extra strong, and they have added a lot of strength, whereas regular PLA would break. This is going to be extra strong. And then you have your fast PLA or fil filament that has been designed to run and print well in the new fast 3D printers. And we can't forget what came onto the scene and was so exciting just a few years ago, co-extrusion. And that's filament that's a color on one side and an entirely different color on the other side. And the line of filament has been divided in half and you have two colors being extruded into the line at the same time. This is the same thing. This is a tricolor. This is a yellow, red, blue. And you can see it here actually in this strand of filament. As I roll it over, you can see yellow, red, and blue. It's just divided into thirds. Also, this is something to point out. Don't forget to look for, uh, sometimes you can get little samples, like you can get four of these at once, which is really nice. And you get to try out multiple types of filament. 
And then the last one is thermochromic. And this is filament that in this case with heat changes color. Sometimes you have filaments that with light change color and those are interesting. Now these are just some of the categories that I would just say grab them, print with them. There's nothing inherently dangerous that's going to hurt your 3D printer. Check the settings on the filament or the manufacturer so that you've got good print temperature settings. Next let's talk about the no-goes or the wait a little bit filaments. So the first one I want to talk about is glow in the dark and glow in the dark seems really innocuous. This in fact is a rainbow glow in the dark and is beautiful, but glow in the dark will wear out a standard nozzle because of the chemical, the glow in the dark chemical in there. It's corrosive to a brass nozzle. So if you have a brass nozzle, you definitely don't want to print with this. If you print a spool of filament, you might completely wear out your nozzle. You can replace a nozzle. Not a huge deal, but this is one I would not start out with glow in the dark filament. There are so many things that they have added into filaments as additives itself. For instance, wood filaments. There are lots of different varieties of wood filaments. They're great, but you can actually scorch the wood and then you've got an uh, extruder that you need to clean out or hot in and that's not fun. But there are other things they can add to it. Like this is steel. Steel actually added. This is a metal. Uh, bronze added to this one and believe it or not concrete added and I have all sorts of other additives that are in here and they have a really interesting effect but if you want to do one of these you want to have a hardened steel nozzle and you also want to really have some good experience knowing what to expect here are some more additives this is hemp and this one is tomato so there's just interesting additives I love finding filaments that do stuff like that I would wait on them though, because this, for instance, can be pretty challenging to print, print with. Now, the, some of the other filaments you might find have a core that is different than the outside. This is a yellow on the outside, but it actually has a carbon fiber core, which is black. And car printing in carbon fiber, you do need a hardened steel nozzle. And so this is one that is a little bit more difficult to print with. I would hold on it. Anything with a core, sometimes a PETG core on PLA. Uh, and the last one is this filament. You'll see it every now and then, and they'll talk about it. They'll say it print it prints like PLA, but then you wet it or you let it sit out in the environment and it softens up and becomes TPU in, like texture. Again, great fun to play around with, but stick to the base PLAs to get started. And lastly, what brands? Are there some brands that are better than others? Well, I have been on a mission to try to track down all the brands of 3D printer filament in the world. And on the filamentstories.com website, there is a filament company. So if you are in a geography and want to see what's available near you, go check that out. And if you know of a company that we don't have on our list, there's a little submission to let us know so we can add it. In any case, over time, something has happened with 3D printer filament. And that is that the cheap 3D printer filaments have gotten much better in quality and the high quality filaments have gotten much lower in price. And so there is a middle zone and there's not a huge range between it. And the other good news is that making 3D printer filament is much more understood because so many things have tr been tried that almost all the 3D printer filament you're going to buy is probably going to print just fine. So I would say go out and find something that you like or something that someone recommends to you and give it a try. And if you do like it, come back and leave us a note in the comments because we're always interested in knowing what brand our folks like to print with. And if you are watching this and you already do a lot of 3D printing, comment in the comments what you like. And so guys, if you think with this video that we have earned your subscription or a like, we greatly appreciate it. And I have one final message to leave you with, and that is everyone has failed prints. No matter how long they've been printing, it all happens to us. So if you're getting failed prints, don't get discouraged. Keep at it. See you next time.